तब कथा मृतम तप्त जीवनम कवि विरीतम कलम शापहम श्रवण मंगलम श्रीमदातम भुवि गृणती भूरिदाजना Sri Ramakrishna's words is a nectar, is an excellent thing that helps the human mind to go up, up in the stage of almost as a divine level. But the only thing we have to understand it and we have to accept it, appreciate it otherwise not. So today we are going to discuss about, listen to the words of the Master Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna who is discussing with the Brahma Samaj, the Master with the Brahma devotees. You know that in that time particularly those from India may or they will know that the Brahmas is a cult from the Hindus. Only difference is they believe that God is without form or otherwise everything is same. So they were having a program as a function and Sri Ramakrishna had the habit of going to each and every place, talk to the people, different type of groups and they are discussing about religion, talking about God thinking about God, he used to go over there. Sometimes out of his own, sometimes on invitation. And then he used to talk to them. Why? To give a direction of their spiritual mind. Majority of the people, they want to practice religion. And they do practice religion, but not very clearly understanding what actually religion is. Today, suddenly there was a phone interview from Utah, Salt Lake City. The one lady, she wanted to know how the Hindus are giving the traditional teaching to the younger generation, particularly adolescent period, this group. So I was answering. So and she was appreciating the views of the Hindus. Why? Because the broadness, the broad-mindedness. And that is exactly what we will learn from Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. It was April 22nd, 1883. Sri Ramakrishna paid a visit to Bini Madhav Pal's garden house at Shiti near Calcutta. There's a group of people, particularly one young lady, and she is a devotee of the Ramakrishna mission, Ramakrishna ideology. I told, the, can you help our devotees who are visiting the Calcutta to take them round and show all the places associated with Sri Ramakrishna? Ramakrishna mission is there, but there is no one to take you to all these places. Why don't you start it? And by that way, you can help some young people. Let them learn this thing. Like a guide, they will go. They will tell about the incidents that happened on that particular uh, the place. Like the Beni Madhav Pal's garden house. It is in Shiti. It is a huge area. And there's, in those days, the Bengalis, rich Bengalis, they used to keep their houses little away from the city. And they used to go over there to spend some quiet time. And particularly, in another group, they wanted to practice religion in those places. So he was a landlord. He was having a big garden house. There they have assembled and to discuss about the Brahma ideology. Sri Ramakrishna went to there, the festival. Many devotees of the Samaj were present and sat around the master. Now and then, some of them asked him questions. 
Master Mahashai, who used to note down all the conversation, he also followed Sri Ramakrishna and minutely he used to listen what the conversation is going on and he used to note down. The Brahma devotee said, what is the way? See, this is a unique way of asking question to a monk. Whenever a monk is going even to beg in the northern India I have seen, if you go to any household, ask for the alms and immediately the lady will come and before giving the alms, she will request, sir, what is the way? Swamiji, marg bataye, in Hindi they used to say, Swamiji, marg bataye, what is the way? What type of way here they are asking for? Actually, how to reach God? Here, Sri Ramakrishna, he is giving a very simple reply, attachment to God. That means detachment to the worldly things implied. But he is not mentioning that. Attachment to God or in other words, love for him and secondly, prayer. The only two things that you have to go and this, 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 nothing. Very simple, love for God and prayer. Apparently it is so easy. But to create love for God, you need sadhu sangha, sat sangha. Again and again, you have to go and listen to the descriptions of, about God, or you have to read about God, you have to discuss it with your friends, and then only you will develop a concept about God. And that is the most important thing. Unless and until we have that conception, Maybe that we are visiting the temple and just going around the temple without knowing actually what God is all through our life. So here Sri Ramakrishna, he goes to those people, though they are not following their own philosophy, but at the same time he was interested to tell them and the moment an opportunity, any question, he used to tell them. Here he says, attachment to God that means love for him and secondly prayer. Now the Brahma devotee is asking to be specific. Which one is the way, love or prayer? Then Sri Ramakrishna is praying, first love, second prayer. Unless and until you know, how can you pray? How can you converse with a person whom you don't know? So first is the introduction. First you develop a, an idea about that person, then you pray. Then you can talk to him. What is the prayer actually? Prayer means opening up the mind to God. Not that the prayer doesn't mean that constantly we have to go on chanting some slokas or the, that we have to sing some bhajans, not like that. Opening up the mind to God. God, today this happened, that happened just like a friend and you cannot open up the mind unless and until you know the person. So the Sri Ramakrishna is first telling, first is the love, then is the prayer. Then he immediately he sang the song, cry to your mother Shama with a real cry, oh my mind. And how can she hold herself from you? How can Shama stay away? This is the Bengali song. Dark dekhi mon, dakar moto, kamon, shama thakte pare. You have to call, but you have to call really so that the mother will listen to it. Cry to your mother shama with a real cry. This is important. Ma Sharadamani Devi, she has also promised Whoever will call me as mother, I will never say no to him or her. So many people are calling mother, mother. Are they all getting the blessings? No. Why? Because there is no earning, there is no real love when we are calling to the mother. So real cry. 
and continuing the master said and one must always chant the name now slowly he is increasing the list first he said only love and prayer then he is telling you must always chant the name and glories of god and pray to him see these are the words he has already said now why again you must have to understand we must know that he is meeting different type of people different group in different occasion different dates so naturally this group is listening for the first time so it's not that once only he said somewhere and then for but this is a totally new group that's why sometimes some of the people who will be traveling with the swamis and they will afterwards say same what swami ji was telling same what to whom <laughs> is it not it's not the same words actually it is the different words to those people he when we are going and meeting a group of people is it totally different when i went to houston i talked about swami vivekananda and then i will be going to vancouver a totally different group and i will be talking on the same subject if a person is constantly moving around along with me are the same words you are telling it's not the same that so happened with the person who is to constantly go along with sri ramakrishna and he said once to master why you say same word every time and the master rebuked him i must do that what is that to you if you do, if you don't like to listen don't listen that we have to understand in different pages when you are reading this gospel same type of words are coming because the people are different but the one good thing is again and again we are listening otherwise we forget sri ramakrishna once said how to realize god but again he is repeating in a little different changes we have already forgotten so this will help us and here he says first love then prayer then he said chant the name of god along with the glory of god this glory of god he never forgets to repeat he will never forgets to say the moment he will say the name of god glory of god because most of the time almost all the hindu community and the other communities they have the mantra diksha the muslim the christians the buddhists the hindus all they will be chanting allahu allahu like that they will be chanting constant but if you don't know who is allah if you don't have any idea about the glory of allah the qualities of allah qualities of god qualities of jesus then it is of no use it is just a name it is a noun it is a name that you are going on pronouncing going on repeating it has no value that's why sri ramakrishna every time repeating these words and to bring back to our mind that you have to repeat the name of god and also the glory of god and pray to him then he said an old metal pot must be scrubbed every day you have to clean it every day otherwise it won't be so clean similarly our mind every day we have to take the name of god we have every day we have to pray otherwise we will forget ah oh, yesterday we took the name of god okay next week we will now this whole week i am busy that won't do every day every moment if possible you have to take the name of god one must practice discrimination and renunciation see how many things came first he said love then prayer then repeating the name of god along with his glories and then he said discrimination and renunciation why renunciation why discrimination because if we think that the moment we have taken the name of god 
and nothing wrong is going to happen to me wrong. So in the Mahabharata there is a story that Bhishma he was lying down on the bed of arrows Sharashajya and then Arjuna came and saw that he is actually crying tears are rolling down he is a Kshatriya Veer he is a so much powerful person he is crying he is afraid of death now he went and asked Krishna look at this grandfather he is afraid to die then Sri Krishna said why don't you go and ask him why he is crying then when he went and asked the grandfather why you are crying then he said I couldn't solve this problem that is coming again and again to my mind the riddle that is when the God himself the Krishna himself is with you Pandavas why you people are suffering so much when the God is with you even then so much of suffering from the Pandavas I couldn't understand this mystery so I am wondering I am crying I am praying to God to tell me what is the truth so discrimination constantly I know you are there sometimes you are hurting me that is for my good and sometimes you are giving me so many things that is also for my good but I am always with you and here he says Brahma devotees then asking is it good to renounce the world with the Brahmas they are not having any conception of sannyasa so some of the people are there some of the groups are there they don't have their conception like the Sikhs community they don't have the conception of the sannyasa the Muslims no conception of sannyasa and uh, among the Christians only the Catholics have that conception Buddhists have that conception so naturally the Brahmi, Brahmanas, Brahmas they are asking this question is it good to renounce the world why he is asking is it good the one person who was asking if everybody renounce the world then what will happen to world I told you, you need not worry about that because no one is going to renounce the world rather he will inspire others to renounce so that he gets a more space so this uh, you need not to worry about there will be people always there the renounce the aga is not such a easy thing the, is it good to renounce then Sri Ramakrishna is very practical immediately he said not for all those who have not yet come to the end of their enjoyments should not renounce the world Kanua, and that is the main thing he is telling unless and until one has satisfied himself otherwise what will happen if the desires are there then after renouncement secretly he will try to enjoy all those things and that is very wrong and that happened in the if we read the history of the Buddhism as a majority of the people they were thinking they started thinking that living in the world is a sin and they started renouncing thousands and thousands of Buddh Buddhist monks and nuns but in fact many of them they are not ready to renounce in reality so that's why the whole thing came down so he is not all those who have not yet come to the end of their enjoyments Brahma then should they lead a worldly life master yes so these are the very practical question and answer worldly life means now he is explaining yes they should try to perform their duties in a detached way before you break the jackfruit open rub your hands with oil so that the sticky milk will not smear them so this he is telling because 
in the this life is so much of pain i just heard one of our very good devotee known person at this age at the fag end of his life suddenly he lost his son as a 30 33 years young man died now what will happen to those parents this is the question the when we are young when we are not in the world so we do not understand but the life is like this is not always the path of roses so naturally we have to understand that these are the things that going to happen in our life there may be happy things there may be also many many things which will give us tormentors so that is the whole total is the life now if i am prepared for this thing from the beginning whatever is going to happen there is the will of god i am not going to be affected that is the person is who will be enjoying otherwise not so it says like this and then you should renounce the world only in mind about the people those people who are living in the samsara in the household life that for them sri ramakrishna is telling you should renounce the world only in mind but for the sanyasi he should renounce the world both inwardly and outwardly so only a group of people who are ready themselves eager to do that for them this is good and then he said what is the meaning of the end of enjoyment the brahma devotee is asking what do you say you just mentioned the end of enjoyment what does it mean then he said i mean the enjoyment of lust and gold most people don't feel any longing for god unless they have once passed through the experience of wealth name fame creature comforts and the like that is to say unless they have seen through these enjoyments so this is the experiences when we have passed through that we know this is the life only so not that the all the time that will be there is constantly passing those who are in a big position in the big post the moment they are in that selected or elected in that post they forget that this is also temporary and naturally they forget and then they try to behave in that fashion and after few years when they are retired then a back end comes so what i am going to do he was such a high position now people are not ready to accept him in that position is very difficult to accept so that is the reason it says like this and sri ramakrishna very clearly mentioning this most people don't feel any longing for god unless they have once passed through the experience brahma devotees who is really bad man and woman and the master see the questions are so practical type of questions in the society there are bad people and good people also now how i will know who is actually bad than master as there are women endowed with vidya shakti so also there are women with avidya shakti now he is using two very important words vidya shakti avidya shakti a woman endowed with spiritual attributes leads a man to god but a woman who is the embodiment of delusion makes him forget god and drowns him in the ocean of worldliness those who are living in this house or life they know it better why because it depends on the wives if they are good ladies they will support the husband whatever you are earning i am happy i will maintain our household with that 
but I am not going to accept anything which you will earn with the wrong way. And you will see that once they say like that, immediately the corruptions, that all, everything will stop. Particularly men, they are behaving in that way only to make their family happy. If the family says, the father, the mother, the wife, they say, we are not going to accept that money, why that man unnecessarily will go and earn the money in a wrong way? Of course, there will be exceptions. Some people are so greedy, they cannot stop. They do it only for the fun of it. Just for the sake of the name and all this. This time I went to a gathering. It was a all people, they came. One person I saw in a very peculiar dress. And he was sitting on the front row. I, I could understand that he is a, must be a big man, at least big donor. Otherwise, how could he get that front row? Then afterwards, I saw his picture. And he was dressing in a very peculiar way. And he was thinking that people will know. Who will know? Only few people who is connected with that person may be knowing who is he. For us, he is a funny person dressing in a very peculiar way. So he was sitting and in such a way he was thinking everybody will appreciate unnecessarily. Rabindranath Tagore, in one of his famous poems, he is mentioning, you are trying to give you all respect and making you a laughing stock for everyone. Nijere korite gaur abodan, nijere keboli kori apuman. So that means one must discriminate. If you live in a humble way, simple way, then people will wonder, oh my God, the per gentleman who was sitting by my side, he was talking, he was so down to earth person, he is so, and so I am so blessed that I could talk to him. Isn't that the most acceptable thing? So that is the way that calls discrimination. And otherwise, simply you are dressing in a very, such a way that very costly dress he was wearing and putting his leg on another leg and he you was you were thinking people will, we were, of course, many people were looking at him but wondering why in such a funny dress he is sitting there. Not accepting him or appreciating. So one must understand these, this humbleness and Sri Ramakrishna is telling this is possible if you have less desire. So, I was, uh, those who have already started our, it says over here, Vidya Shakti and Avidya Shakti. Balmiki in his Ramayana, he said, Basana Dividha Prokta, Shuddhacha Malina Tatha. Basana, desire, are two types, Shuddhacha and Malina Tatha. Molina Janmo Hetu Shuddha Janmo Binashini. This is very important for a Hindu. Birth and rebirth. Going beyond the circle of birth and rebirth. The moment we are taking the human body and we are doing something, the actions and its result, and then we are going once again going to that circle, maybe as a human being. Maybe not taking different forms, different names, and taking birth in different species and suffering. So they are very much careful about that and they like to go beyond that circle. So, and here in the Balmiki, he is telling if you have the desire, that one desire which will make you free. Another desire which will make you bound and suffer. So, basana dividha prokta shuddhacha malina tatha. Shuddha means the pure. Malina means impure. And this impure means abhidya shakti. Malina janmohetuhu is the cause of again birth and shuddha is the mukti. And 
we have the desire being even being a monk we have the desire desire to construct a temple or to help this person or to make these and that it is also desire but not a selfish desire not for my personal enjoyment not for my personal name and fame that's called shuddha the moment it goes beyond that it is ashuddha the same desire i will construct a temple so that people will remember that i constructed this temple ashuddha so that it's it is the vasana it is the desire the result of the i am doing it for the benefit of others then same vasana same desire is the cause of mukti freedom and that thing if it is directed towards the self only for me for my ego for my ego satisfaction then is the bound the vasana desire said to be the two the impure and the pure impure is the cause of birth and pure destroys those causes what is the impure tendencies again in the question and the, to answer that balmiki is telling agyana sudhandhakara dhana ahamkara shalini ignorance is full of ego ahamkara shalini is completely the full of ego and that's why bhagavan sri ramakrishna said if the ego can be eradicated then you are free that's all what is the goal of a spiritual life only this point only this one thing eradicating the ego if we remove the ego what remains self confidence and what is that self that is the ultimate goal i am confident the self confidence of course the english is a different meaning but the self means the atman and on that only i depend i believe that's skull and the naturally ego when removed the agyana sudandhakara dhana ahankara shalini and what is the result if i am egoistic puna janma kari prokta malina vasana budai the learned people they are telling that these type of vasanas malina vasana malina vasana means that vasana the desire for satisfaction of the ego will bring you back to the circle of birth and death so that is sri ramakrishna knowing this fully well he is trying to help the devo- devotees and he said this then the brahma devotee is asking and sri ramakrishna again he said this universe is created by the moha maya of god moha maya contains both vidya maya the illusion of knowledge and abidya maya the illusion of ignorance see the maya means illusion one is illusion of knowledge it is exactly it is not the knowledge illusion of knowledge and ignorance illusion of ignorance avidya maya the avidya maya illusion of ignorance we know what is ignorance avidya asmita raga desha avinivesha all these five things are the klesha pancha klesha in our why we should meditate in that class we are constantly describing and discussing about that ignorance is the avidya then asmita is the ego ego means i but few years before before my birth i was not knowing who am i but now as i have grown up i am thinking i am this forgetting that few years before before my birth where i was who i was i was not knowing so this is called ignorance because of the ego then comes desire the moment ego the i so i want this i want to be like that so the desire start coming and when the desire is not fulfilled desha aversion 
and then ultimately comes fear of death avinivesha and these are called five pancha klesha afflictions why we suffer because of only five things these are the five things and sri ramakrishna said it came from the god he created the good and the bad the illusion of ignorance through the help of the vidyamaya one cultivates such virtues as the taste of holy company that is true and very true the taste of holy company we sometimes go to different places and people are discussing about so many things and we like it and we sit for hours together but the moment you ask them to go to a good place they will never go there's a in a bhalparaiso the there one bar is there when swami vivekananda visited that place he stayed over there on the first floor he stayed that because the uh, the station is very near <coughs> it is the same building same way i entered into that in america you know they don't bother who you are so naturally they never turn their faces to see me but the person who was in charge of that he welcomed us and when we were asking this question he explained it that was very interesting but these people they are gossiping talking laughing drinking smoking the whole area that atmosphere i could it is very difficult to st stand there even for 10 15 minutes but they are spending hours together and if you ask them to go to a good place where the people will be meditating where the people will be singing and where the people are discussing about god all the good things and that will be a place of suffocation for them after 10 15 minutes is impossible so that is the test am i really taking or proceeding towards god this is the test so he says like this here through the help of vidyamaya one cultivates such virtues at the test for holy company then knowledge then devotion and love renunciation see what is the spiritual life people talk about spiritual life and he said oh this swami has come one gentleman was telling this swami has come from himalaya and he practiced sadhana spiritual life for 10 years 12 years what is the spiritual life actually what is the practice of spiritual life these and this is the speciality of the gospel of sri ramakrishna no ambiguity and nothing hidden and very clear even if we don't understand it is a bad luck for us and he is telling to cultivate some of the good qualities the first and foremost the taste for the holy company it doesn't mean that you have to come to a person but reading the good book so i was really appreciating one one young lady she told that when i was in my house i could hardly read 10 minutes or 15 minutes from the pages of a holy book and when i am sitting over here in the ashrama i could complete nearly 25 pages that means the atmosphere that helps and the whole mind gets concentrated but in the house maybe it is not so that's why that we construct temple we construct churches because of that so that that place people go only with one intention only to pray to god to think about god so that vatavaran as we call that atmosphere it is surcharged with that and whenever we are going and sitting that devotion the knowledge the love the renunciation it is increasing and that's called vidya abidya maya consists of 
five elements and the objects of five senses that is the rupa, rasa, sabda, sparsha and ganda. The form, the flavor, the smell, the touch and the sound these makes forget one forget God. The Brahma devotee, if the power of avidya is the cause of ignorance, then why has God created it? Look at this. Even today, many people will be asking the same question. And at the time of Sri Ramakrishna, they also asked the same question. Why the God has created ignorance then? Master replied in one line, very simple. It is his play. How to know if you don't understand what is God, how you will know why he is doing all these things? It is his play. So that is the wonderful thing. The father, he was asking his son, he gave a just a toy and then broke the toy and told, can you please fix the toy again? Then naturally the boy may, the child may say, why you in the first place broke the child? I broke the toy. You broke the toy and then asking me to again to fix it. What is the cause? Because the father wants that a child should learn. Is the doll, so where will be the head? Where will be the hands? Where will be the legs? Where will be the chest and the back and all those things? So that the child is learning many things from that. It's a game, it's an engagement, at the same time it is a learning. Why the father is giving this difficulty to that child? Because by that he will learn many things. Here also Sri Ramakrishna said, the glory of light cannot be appreciated without darkness. Happiness cannot be understood without misery. Knowledge of good is possible because of knowledge of evil. So Swami Vivekananda, he is telling, I bless my failures. I bless my mistakes. So when we are making the mistakes, when we are failure in difficult, different things, we must learn from that. So this happens when we are not careful. And in this says, further, the mango grows and ripes on account of the covering skin. Sri Ramakrishna is giving the example. That skin is not necessary. No one is going to eat the skin. But the skin is necessary for the mango flesh to ripe. So it says, you throw away the skin when the mango is fully ripe and ready to be eaten. It is possible for a man to attain gradually to the knowledge of Brahman because of the covering skin of Maya. Maya in its aspects of Vidya and Avidya may be likened to the skin of the mango. Both are necessary. So the good and bad that we see, in the, even the bad is also teaching us. What is the teaching? we should not behave like that. And when we see something good, what is the teaching? We must behave like that. We must learn that. We must follow that. So one is teaching us not to. Another is, I can remember long back when we were very small kids, we used to go in, the, in our country, children are walking at least a mile to reach to their school. So we friends used to go and we saw a very strong man he used to sit at the side of the road in Calcutta and other places there's a, they call it Baranda he used to sit over there many other muscle men they used to be there and he was a, a, that in that old place people used to be afraid of him and we used to think oh look at this such a muscle and good so we used to go and sometimes looking at him sometimes touching his muscles Sometimes he will flex his muscle and he will touch and appreciate. Then one day he said, you children, you come over here. Instead of going to the classes, don't do it. Then he said, 
I made this mistake. And now I am sitting over here on the street actually and I have nothing. Only I create some fear in the minds of people to leave, to get some money. I keep this sword, I keep this, this thing and that thing only to create fear in the minds of people and they give money and along with the money they give silent cursing. Not with happiness, no will give me money with the and because I am this muscle man sitting over here, you must learn seeing me that you should not be like this. Go and study. Concentrate your mind on the study. Become a big person, a doctor, engineer, and big administrator, and leave high head. And people like me will be always at your feet. So see the same teaching. So that is the wonderful way. These is, are the teachings. Even the bad are also giving the teaching. Sri Ramakrishna is telling we have to learn from that. God is giving both good and bad. And he has given us the discriminative mind. We have to learn from that what I am going to accept. And if we make the mistake, we have to suffer. So that is what he says. When the two brothers went to God and they asked, please teach us. Then he said, Tattvamasi. So the story goes. You are that. And the brothers were returning back. They were thirsty. They went to a pond to take the water, bring the water. And the young brother saw and the moment he saw the reflection in that water, he shouted, brother, I have understood. I got the answer. What that God said? I am he. That means this body. And the other one said, how can that be? Because body is changing. One day we will be all old people and then die. The body cannot be the God, the permanent. He said, no, no, no. Whatever you think, you think. I am satisfied. He became Asura. And the other one became Devata. So that is the story. And through that he says, the same teaching. If you are misunderstanding, you are becoming this. So that is why the God cannot be blamed. Because both the things he has given, at the same time he is asking you to apply the discriminative faculty. And he said, this the mango, that cover, it helps to grow. The similarly, the bad things helps you to grow properly. The Brahma devotee said, Is it good to worship God with form, an image of the deity made of clay? That was a buzzword in those days. They used to all the time discuss about this. That if God is all pervading, how the God can be in the image. The Sri Ramakrishna said, you do not accept God with form, that is all right. So this is called Hinduism. The broadness. The moment you close and say this is the only way, then you are no more Hindu. The speciality is this. You do not accept God with form, that is all right. The image is not meant for you. For you it is good to deepen your feeling toward your own ideal. From, from the worshippers of the personal God, you should learn their yearning. For instance, Sri Krishna's attraction for Radha. You should learn from the worshippers of personal God their love for their chosen ideal. When the believers in the personal God worship the images of Kali and Durga with their feeling, they cry from the depths of their souls, Mother, O oh Mother, how much they love their deity. You should accept that feeling. You don't have to accept the image. See. He is telling from them you learn this. You don't want to accept 
the image okay but take that attention that they put the love that they put in the worship of the images brahmo how does one cultivate the spirit of dispassion why don't all attain it this is the wonderful questions how one can attain the dispassion and here the master is telling dispassion is not possible unless there is satisfaction through the enjoyment so he is talking with the brahma devotees and that is why he is talking like this when he was talking with the direct disciples afterward they became the monks he was telling if you go on enjoying this world as many time is not going to quench your thirst like the yayati he went on enjoying this but his thirst for desire never quenched they never stopped but he knew that these people don't understand that that is why he is talking with them in their own terms he is telling them so that they will understand at least something they will do and they won't be afraid of practicing religion this passion is not possible unless there is satisfaction through enjoyment you can easily cajole a child with candies or toys but after eating the candies and finishing its play it cries i want to go to my mother unless you take the child to its mother it will throw away the toy and scream at the top of its voice so this is called dispassion as long as i want those things okay go for it but the time will come when you will feel that i don't want all these things and then automatically the cry will come i want to go to my mother mon chalo nijo niketane oh my mind now let me go to my own abode so that is the master is telling and this is the system of orthodox hinduism therefore the brahma devotees asks the master about another question which we will read and discuss in our next class the question is very important is spiritual knowledge impossible without a guru the guru purnima is coming so the answer to this is very important and in the next time we will listen to the master and let us pray offering our pranam niranjanam nityam अनंतरूपम् भक्तानुकंपा धृतविग्रहम् वै ईशावतारम् परमेशमिद्यम् कमराम कृष्णम् Shirasanamaha Shirasanamaha